Welcome to the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles, the podcast dedicated to commercial food equipment appearance. My name is Pat Finley. My goal is to shine a light on what I believe to be one of the most interesting and rewarding industries a field service technician can work in. I love the work I do, and I'm glad you could listen to this podcast. This episode, Jason Rich and myself are joined by Ashley from Refrigeration Technologies. We cover cleaners, dialogue, and more. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Kitchen Chronicles. Tonight, we have Rich Ortega, Jason Latimer, and special guest, Ashley from Refrigeration Technology. So, how are you, Ashley? I am wonderful. How are you guys? Better than It's Thirsty Thursday, so it's a good day. Oh. Where are we? says he's knocking our pay. We're three minutes late. Uh... It's always Thursday. We're, we're drinking on the job too, Quentin. <laughs> so, I've been following Ashley for a few years. Um, she recently just started with Refrigeration Technologies, and she's been absolutely brilliant. Um, she's putting out all kinds of videos, safety level labels, proper usage of products, that kind of stuff. Um, so, I'm glad to have her on and let her talk about you know everything Refrigeration Technologies has to offer. Um, people think you know we're kitchen guys; we don't do you know we don't need that kind of stuff, but. I'm telling you, we need that chemical probably more than anybody else the grease we deal with. So thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. I always uh, get excited when people want to talk to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, a, it's been a long time coming. I, I, I try to get everybody I can to come on, um, especially to talk about you know the products that are out there to make our jobs easier, our lives easier. Um, I mean, we deal in, in these kitchens, and they'll put – you know, a reach and freezer or reach and cooler right next to a fryer or even under a hood. And it just sucks that grease straight into those coils. And it's an absolute nightmare. So I'm a firm believer in everything refrigeration technology has to offer, you know, from the, from the, uh, their, their new, uh, heat dissipation pads. Um, that's pretty sweet. Um, mm -hmm. I can see a high use for that with all these Delta filled coolers. Um, they got the plastic backs and sides and I've melted some in the past. So that's not always good. <laughs> Yeah, the heat shield is a game changer. It's a really, really good product. Um, we're kind of doing like a September push for heat shields. So you'll probably see a lot of content coming out uh, now that I'm back from vacation on uh, that product. So if you haven't if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. It's a great, a great heat product. Sorry, I far you just like waited right in front of my face on my microphone and scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Yeah, um, I follow Chill Guy, man. He 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 loves that heat blanket. He uh, he uses every chance he gets, and he doesn't. He wants to show it off, and uh, I'm a firm believer in it because he's just straight put the torch to it. He's got some burn marks on it, and he just keeps taking it. So I'm gonna check it out for sure. Yeah, he's a he, he he's like a um, every company's dream, right? Like he just puts content out mm -hmm. for the sake of putting out content, and it's I mean it's great for us, right? Like. We appreciate it. It's it's showing it in the field. It's better than I could ever do from my home. You know, I can do demos and whatnot, but it's not the same as somebody who's in the field using it, showing how it's holding up against everything. Um, and he, he, you know, he teaches a lot too. So I feel like having kids who are learning how to braise, you know, just destroy the shit out of it, <laughs> which makes it that much more, you know, authentic. Vibrant. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I actually had one of my videos we shared today by um, United Refrigeration. And that was the big blue video. I had a couple of those here lately um, where I you know, kind of highlighted that. And I love big blue, you know, the sub zero version and everything. I, I use it all the time and uh, it's been saving my butt here lately. So, yeah, I love everything Viper does for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Venom packs, when those things came out, it was a life changer. Like, I rushed right out and bought them as soon as I, my local United had them. It, I used them. At, at KFC cleaning some dirty coils. And of course, they were micro channels, so it was a yellow. And uh, of course, I didn't read the directions. And I had a little foam party going on the roof because that <laughs> stuff foams up bad. But me being me, I was like, let's see if this thing takes a roof drop. And I just chucked it like way up in the air off the roof and it hit the concrete and it was perfectly fine. I was like, sweet, I guess it'll last in the van. I love that because that's usually like the biggest question that I get. Like, oh, this isn't going to survive in my truck. Like, what if I chuck it into a box full of nails? And I'm like, okay. 
why would you do that? First of all, <laughs> like yeah. realistically, you're never going to be doing that, <laughs> but like they're tested, they're good to go. You know, it's a nice little space saver, super easy to pour into your uh, foam gun jug or however you're going to apply it. So um, yeah, good, good product to have. Thanks for that. <laughs> you know, we just pre-ordered them from my United. When I found out about them, they were like, Oh yeah. The rep just came in today to tell us about it. I'm like, I'm going to take one of each. And let you know, I tried them out and I turned in all the other gallons that were on my truck. I went to the parts room and I said, here y'all go. <laughs> Take out my min max. I don't want these anymore. Between the quality of the, the chemical in the venom packs and the portability, for me, there's no reason to carry anything else on my truck. For I agree. <laughs> I haven't had an opportunity to try any of those. I mean, the, the experience I have with your guys' products is the Nylog, the, the little red can which is super convenient in small spaces. Uh, I wouldn't take it to a big con uh, condenser or anything. Um, and the the big blue, the, the the leak check. I've been wanting to try those Venom packs because Rich keeps talking about them and talking about them. I'm the plant maintenance manager for the state, so I have a full team that would just do PMs. And we do use the gallon stuff. And, and coincidentally, Rich, somebody, an email just went out in the company about that stuff spilling on the floor and, and damaging, eating up the, and I was just thinking about that. So I'm going to have to look into getting like one of each of those and, and trying it out with my lead tech. And, and we have quite, we're about to go into Q4 and Q4 is all ACs. So we're just finishing up ice machines this quarter, the end of this month, but I definitely want to look into, I seen there's different colors. I'm not sure what they are. Um, what they do and whatnot. And we are dealing with a lot of micro channels and whatnot. So I'd love for you to educate. For yeah. those who like myself, who's in a position to get quite a bit of that, has to use it all the time and, and can be educated about that. I'd appreciate it from you, Ashley. Absolutely. So a micro channel, the you're you're basically gonna go with the yellow pack. The yellow pack yellow? is gonna say okay. condenser on it. Um, it's actually just a super concentrated version of our HD jug and a different for a different uh, delivery method than the aerosol. So if you you're familiar with the aerosol, you love the aerosol, mm -hmm. you're gonna love the condenser um, and the HD product is the same. So basically with the venom packs, they're just, they've taken the product that's in the gallon jug and they pulled all the water out of it to make it more concentrated, a little bit more powerful and a little bit more smaller of a footprint to, you know, easier to handle and fit on the truck. So for anything micro channel, you're going to go with your yellow um, and you're good to go. Basically, what, what what we recommend across the board is not using anything corrosive, nothing toxic, anything like that. Because if it's bad for you, it's probably bad for your metal too. Yeah. Um, so we do have a brightener. We I'm not obviously you wouldn't want to use it on a micro channel. Um, we don't really suggest using that unless you're in like some pretty extreme situations. So you're really only going to use the yellow and the green for what you guys are dealing with. So condenser for all your standard coils. If you're ever dealing with an evap, um, that's where your green comes into play. And it says evaporator or evap plus if you're looking at the, at the gallon jugs. Um, and there's something that's really cool about that that I would touch on while we're here and talking about it. That's that it has enzymes in it. So it's one of the only products out there on the market that has enzymes. And those enzymes actually go towards digesting any bacteria that's on that. Bio eats up biomaterial. Exactly. So especially in homes that have that kind of musty or old sock smell or, you know, that grossness that you really want to get rid of, you'll hit it with the Evap Plus or the Evaporator uh, Cleaner and it will continue to work for the next several days. So you don't want to rinse it off. You'll leave it on there. Again, it's not corrosive. It's not toxic. It's not going to hurt anything. It's safe. Um, once you turn the unit back on for someone to be breathing, it's, it's really not going to hurt you, but it's going to continue digesting any of that bacteria and grossness that's on the coil to make for sure that no more odor uh, will exist. So oh, yeah, I like that. We're food guys. So we're all restaurant repair guys. That's our home base. So is that, Evaporator, is it food safe? I mean, like to be in there, so it's cool to be in coolers. Okay, because I mean, we'll go in a cooler a lot of times and they'll have open produce in there and they're supposed to rinse it off. But I mean, when I clean the evaporator, I always I would rinse it and dry, try to dry it best I can for turning fans back on so I'm not blowing that cup everywhere. But I thought right. I'm sure it's cool to use in those environments. So that's good to know. Yeah, don't spray the food, but yeah, it's safe. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure because I like I've had guys take that. And some other stuff smells like it says 
fresh just lemon scent or something and sprayed it in there. And I'm like, you walk in there and your eyes start burning, you start coughing. I'm like, <laughs> why are you spraying this shit by the food, guys? Man, don't be doing that. So yeah, we, we don't we don't love a lemon scent. <laughs> no, no. So a, a, are those Viper packs the one that look like Capri Suns? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. Big Capri Sun, That's like like comparison. like gasolina packs from Puerto and, Rico, and, and you you get a lot of um different dilutions out of them. I think you can get what up to up to nine gallons or something like that with the lightest dilution. Correct. I usually oh, end up using wow. it like the oh, yeah. medium to heavy duty, so that's probably more like four to five gallons if I'm if I'm guessing right, if I remember. But yeah, yeah even with bad coils, you're gonna get at least four gallons out of out of each pack. So it's pretty. So good. one pack, you're putting out that many. That many yeah, gallons, and several gallons. Super, yeah. Yeah. super, super concentrated. Um, yeah, they all they all go about eight or nine gallons um, when diluted at the lowest level. Which, I mean, obviously, you're the only person that can determine what the right amount of cleaner is. But I think as a whole, most people use too much cleaner. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not diluted properly. Is there so. such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> In the restaurant, our, have you seen our thing. equipment on these restaurants? Uh, <laughs> you guys probably deal with a lot more disgusting things. Like I can say that than you know the typical homeowner or residential contractor. I'm sure, but uh, I'm gonna. I, I'm speaking to that world because that's mostly what I've dealt with up till yeah. now. But <laughs> as a whole, people I think generally use a little bit too much, but. We could show you some stuff and you'd probably never eat out again. So <laughs> I used that brightener one time. Um, me and my trainee, we did an overnight um swire, a fryer swap out of at a at a just say a burger place. And we mm. took out the old fryer and there was so much grease behind it. I'm like, I can't put this brand new fryer into all this grease. So I got my half gallon sprayer, mixed up some brightener, sprayed it all over the floor, all over the backsplash, ate, ate everything up. And I'm talking about quick, it probably took me an extra. 15 minutes uh, to do all of that and get that grease up. Yep. So that's one of the situations that we recommend the brightener. And it's, you know, those, those uh, really nasty fryer places where they use a lot of oil, um, kind of that kitchen situation that you guys are describing. Um, and then, you know, a, a unit that just hasn't been maintenance in a super long time. Cause they're going to be really nasty and gross too. Mm -hmm. Well, brightener, the blue stuff, is the reason I wear glasses. Um, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. I was uh, cleaning a big uh, decoil, and uh, I was underneath there on the underneath side spraying it down, and the wind shifted, and it blew it right in my eyes. I literally laid on the roof like 30 minutes crying with a water hose in my eyes. I thought I was going to be blind. Oh, no. Did That's you wear glasses before that? <laughs> That's the reason I've worn glasses for the last 10 years. Is it? Oh, it's bad. Like, Are those wow. prescription? Oh, yeah. They're bi oh, okay. I had bifocals before I was 40 because of it. It's, so I don't mess that, 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 that blue stuff, man. That brightener, nope, I don't play that game unless I absolutely have to. And then I'm like looking like full hazmat suit, face shield. I'm like, I'm not playing with that stuff, man. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to be that way though, right? Like, I mean, it will, it will hurt you. It will melt your skin. And some of them are actually reactive to sunlight. And I don't think a lot of guys realize this. So if you're using, you know, a, a corrosive product um, on a rooftop and the sun hits it, sometimes it actually activates more of the chemicals. So it actually creates more of a burn. So, yeah. It that stuff's bad. You get on your skin, it feels like your skin's peeling off. I'm like, what is this? So, Jennifer's in here. She keeps talking about. Uh, she yeah. said, <laughs> "For a dirty meme," and John Pastorella liked it. Create first impression. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's funny. So, Anderson says, "What's the best sprayer for commercial kitchen?" Any recommendations? I just use a pump-up sprayer, but if you're using the Viper Venom packs, do not use the standard uh, foam gun because you will burn through it and it is super concentrated. You need to use the one specifically made for it or pre-dilute it before you put it in the foam gun. Yes, that's a great point. Um, I didn't actually realize that until I started doing a little bit more research, but yeah, a lot of the other guns don't have as low of a dilution ratio on them as ours does. So yes, be careful if you're not using our gun, but you should just be using our gun. <laughs> yeah, yep, use our gun. What else in the chat? <laughs> Jennifer says she uses a backpack sprayer from DeWalt. I haven't seen that. I just use a, I just a normal pump up sprayer and do it that way and pre mix it. Um, that way That's I'm what not... I use a half gallon Harbor Freight pump sprayer. 
And then that way, when it you know craps out, it's five bucks, and I can go get another one. Yeah, one week later, I can get two different ones. So buy, buy several. That was great. <laughs> I have a one gallon one, they're cheap, and then when I'm melting ice on foils, I have like a three gallon one, so I can just fill it up with hot water, so I'm not running back and forth nonstop. So it's a good question. So sweet. Right. So. I don't want to plug a wholesaler, but I'm going to at the moment just because they are running a special. So if you are interested in checking out the um, Venom Packs and the Foam Gun, United has a special going through uh, end of October. So you'll get some dollars off if you want to save some cash. Huh. I want to get a pallet. Pallet? No, really. My That's what we've been talking about. My guys are, I'm looking at their their invoices and they're all going in and buying so much it's like we might as well just buy this stuff on a pallet have them just get it from the warehouse so i need to mm -hmm. uh you know those the gallon brand that's really popular and everywhere we kind of just been stuck with that and there's some other brand name ace i've just been made aware of but i don't know how good that stuff is but we're looking at comparing uh and okay. getting a few pallets of some stuff and having it at Do the, the better packs bro y'all won't regret it I, i'm telling oh, you it's so small man just make sure the guys dilute it it's i have milk I had milk uh, crates, you know, from schools I've stolen for many years. And fuck you with pimples in. So you can fit four gallon jug in it, right? You can fit like 20 venom packs in one of those. It's amazing. Like you can just throw it in a drawer in the shelf. You can just throw it on the stuff. I'm going to uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you can you can you can tuck that stuff anywhere though. It's so small and it just fits everywhere. And you're gonna save room in the truck. So it's well worth the venom packs. Absolutely. And I think it kind of depends on how, you, like, I know there are some guys, we do offer 55 gallon jugs, gallon drums too. So if you have teams that they dilute it for you or they send you out, like, that's also an option. Oh, okay. I'm just, I was just texting my lead tech to pick up three Venom packs tomorrow morning just so we could try it out. Um, all right. I'll look at, look at that a little bit bulkier. That's the way you go. Just buy it by the jug, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So like United to the spot then. <laughs> So you have what color is your brightener? Just curious. Because you blue. mentioned a green, blue. Is that a common? Pretty much across the board, for the most part, I think people kind of stick to that. The blue, your blue is typically a brightener. I will say the other chemical companies. Um, I think there's a little bit of like a, I'm gonna call it like the Skittles rainbow, right? Like how many colors we possibly put out? Um, <laughs> and I know there's been some confusion about what is corrosive versus what's not corrosive. It for sure is gross if it says brightener. Anything that says brightener on it is gross. Anything says bright, yeah. But there okay. are a lot of other chemicals out there too that are also corrosive. They're just not labeled brightener. So I think, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the whole reading the label thing, which I know not everyone likes to do, but you gotta <laughs> check on the back because there's a lot of a lot of chemicals and a lot of ones that are praised as being clean um, that are actually very corrosive for the metal and for your skin. So well, I'll have to do a comparison test and just put everyone on blast. I'll, you know, come what November, October 1st will be Q4, and I will have some condensers that are just black and greasy. So I think I'll have to take a, a little cardboard and spray one brand, this other side, this brand, and then rinse them off and make a nice little video. And let's yeah. see what happens. Do it live. See if I get, oh, yeah. if I get in trouble. <laughs> but, uh, Back away. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure everyone's everyone's going to stand by their stuff, so no. we'll see what happens. <laughs> Man, I've been doing this 17 years. been doing refrigeration for almost 15 years, and the Viper's the best stuff I've used. I mean, and we I've had companies. I, I worked for a company. I owned a chemical company at one point. I used to work for Equalite Equipment Care, and they owned a chemical company, and you use their chemicals, and it's like, their stuff sucks. I mean, hate to say it, but the stuff they got was just terrible. I mean, so. Oh, the, the old Eagle Lab? Yeah. Yeah, they had all their own shit. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So, so anything else in the coil cleaner side we need to talk about before we go into some of the other stuff? I mean, I think that's that's pretty standard um, as far as cleaners go. We really just have the three. Like I said, we try to keep it real simple. You don't need twenty five different colors because they're really all doing basically the same thing, more or less, right? Or for the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we try to keep it nice, short, sweet, easy. Get you as you know, much space back in your truck as you can possibly have. Um, so, you know, brightener, condenser cleaner, EVAP, very simple. And then if you like the aerosol or you're, you know, not in a position where you can use water, the red can, which everybody loves, 
is probably our biggest selling product. So. So that says no rinsing. I got a question on that. Mm -hmm. See if you can answer this. So the guys always say, oh, no, non-rinsing, non-rinsing. And, and I, always, I was told that non-rinsing only is for like evaporators because evaporators will pull humidity out of the air and they'll self rinse with humidity when it condenses on the coils. Now, I was always told if you use a no-rinse coil cleaner on a condenser, you still need to rinse it. So technically, yes, you are correct. Um, so it is a no rinse, like you can get away with not rinsing it. However, if you think about soap in general, right, if you leave soap on a condenser, dirt is going to be attracted to that. So it'll just get dirtier quicker because there's it's sticky, right? So you can not rinse it if you don't want to rinse it. It's not going to hurt it. Um, a lot of the other ones that say no rinse that are corrosive, you would have an issue right? So being that it's not corrosive, it's totally safe. So if you left it on there, you're not going to have a problem. Um, but you know, if, if you have the ability to rinse it, rinse it, it'll, it'll be cleaner longer. Okay. Good point. Good point. I was just curious. That's the way I was always taught. That's the way I always tell everybody. So I just want to make sure I was doing it right and not just making an ass of myself. Yeah. With the, with the aerosol is, a, it is a true non rinsing formula and that it will run completely clean. Um, but you are correct. Like what you stated with, you know, there being condensation in the evap. So it kind of helps get rid of anything and it's not outside, right? It's not exposed to the, the shit that, you know, a, a condenser coil that would be exposed to. Sweet, sweet. So I want to go on to sealants and there's only three, well, technically two. Um, well, I guess there's two of one and one of the other. So, I've been trying to find Nylog White in stock somewhere so I can try it. So I do cooking stuff. So I do a lot of um, fryers and I use a different company. It doesn't turn hard. It stays pretty pliable. Um, and that's the biggest thing is I go to take gas lines off and it's like, I don't know what they use, but that crap turns to concrete. So how does Nylog White fair in those situations does it stay pretty malleable or does it, is it going to turn into concrete like everything else does it's going to be just like your blue and your red um it's still going to be you know that sticky kind of goopy fun product to work with <laughs> it's not none of them will harden um so you're not going to run into any concrete type situations so what is nylog white then is it like nylog but for gas lines or is it like a paste exactly yep so it's really I don't. It, it's, it's basically like our own version of pipe dope, right? It's okay. very sticky um, and it's basically made for anything that's not a refrigerant based system. Is there like a but is it like regular, kind of a regular pipe dope or is it like the nylog itself? Like what, so what it's, type of sticky. Consistency? it's sticky like the nylog, but it's going to have like a brush on the end instead of a squeezy tube. Okay. I have to give that I a like it. it. Yeah, I've been looking for it. I haven't called it in stock. No. My United probably has it in the back because my United exactly across the street is actually well. It, the, the United is like literally across the street from my office. And it's like their warehouse for Indy, their Indianapolis warehouse, and it's freaking huge. It's a giant building, and uh, they probably have it in the back. They just don't have it out front. I need to ask them when I go in there. So, um, Anderson asks, "What's a good amount of time to let it sit?" So the coil cleaner, how long do you suggest? Just depends on how dirty it is, or so the coil cleaner. Are we talking about the the non rinsing or just in general? I'm not sure. Let's, general. Let's do general. Is he is he asking about not, cleaner or the dope? He was asking about cleaner. It just cleaner? It, oh. it popped so with, up. The, with the non rinsing, it'll actually run clear when it's done. Um, mm -hmm. so it's a visual cue. And I kind of say the same thing with your with your other uh, cleaners. When once you spray it, as it starts to fall off the coils and like you know the foam dissipates, that's how you know. He said non rinse. So yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. The non rinse will literally turn completely clear and run down clear, and that's how you know. Sweet, sweet. Good Try to know. <laughs> so we got Nylog red and blue. Um, you know, there's all kinds of people out there that put that crap uh, on everything. I'll be nice. I won't cast any more tonight. If I got one or two in there, I better lay off or get in trouble. But um, <laughs> that stuff is amazing. I love it. Um, <laughs> it gets a bad rap sometimes because people like to put it on there so heavy. Um, I have had nothing but great experiences with it. Um, you know, I use it for gaskets if I'm working on a compressor that has a gasket. Say if I got a bolt of King Valve compressor, put some on there, and it holds that, that gasket in place and, you know, adds a little sealant factor to it. Um, I put it on all my uh, flare nuts, put it on the face a little bit, and then I put it on the, the back where it spins to kind of lubricate you from binding. Um, that stuff is great. I mean, 
I don't know how long that stuff's been out there, but I'm sure it's probably – it probably isn't the number one seller because that little bottle probably lasts forever, but <laughs> a very good product for them. It does. It is quite the uh, the Terminator. It just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> but it is. It's a good product. I know there's a lot of, I feel like, mixed emotions about certain things, right? Um, but, you know, it really is. It's made out of refrigerant oil. It's not going to contaminate the system, which I think is the biggest one. Um, and since it doesn't harden, it's not going to cause any uh, issues with, like, clogging or anything like that. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I bought that that blue stuff that I just won't name that I don't understand why people still use oh, since Pylog's been invented. Oh, dude. You go to a King Valve cap and you see all that and you're like, I hate Yeah. That. I shouldn't have to put my body weight behind my wrench to take off the cap off of a King Valve. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the metal one. The plastic ones just break off. And those metal ones, you're like, yeah. no way I can get this off. So. Hey, this is a good question from Megan from Mechanical Environments. What cleaner would you suggest to use on a squirrel cage when they are super dirty and we have to clean them because there isn't a replacement in stock? I think I'm going to have to ask what's a squirrel cage. Is it's it the blower. It's the evaporator blower cage. Okay. It's the blower <laughs> wheel that spins. It gets it gets caked up. It has a lot of grease on it. And I'm, I'm thinking br your brightener, but I'm not she, sure she, what yeah. you would suggest. That's what they actually service though before she gets into this. So. They uh, oh. they have a very niche market, and it probably has a lot of pollen and sticky stuff in it because they're in mm. Colorado, and they they specific they they service grow houses. That's their that's their big got market. it. So, yeah, nice. so this would probably be one of the instances where I would say do a brightener. Um, I mean, you can try hitting it with the condenser. It's still a super powerful like degreaser, but I know with the grow houses because of how contaminated we'll say their air is it's a little bit different of a situation um so i would say either you're either going to use the the hd condenser so you're yellow at a, at a pretty powerful um dilution ratio or use the bright and just be mindful to wear your ppe and make sure you clean it all off I, i've used and obviously i don't do grow houses but you know even on some nasty uh blower wheels and stuff i've used the condenser and it does very well with nasty yeah. grease and, and everything on it so that would be my recommendation. Start with the condenser cleaner. Sweet. That's good to know. So I only buy Nylock Blue. Uh, I don't buy the red anymore just because blue does it all. Right? Mm -hmm. so, but uh, like I said, you said people, you know, have a kind of a heated debate on that, where to use it. I mean, as long as you're not leaking uh, after you put it on there and it's not getting into the system. And it's safe for the systems. I mean, it says right here, uh, approved by OEM manufacturers, it seals uh, flares and threaded connections you will not contaminate the system. It's made from refrigerant oil, so it's not going to contaminate the system. I mean, unless you squeeze a whole bottle into your suction side, I doubt it's going to do much to it. Um, I don't want to see what happen, but I mean, eventually something will done will happen. But you know, but, yeah. I mean, I feel like maybe you shouldn't be working on equipment if you decide to yeah a whole bottle of catalog into it. I don't know. <laughs> He's the same guy that throws the bottle into a, a bucket of nails. Exactly. <laughs> I throw this plastic bag in a bucket of nails. So, we'll do it all the, all day uh, for Nylog, and it's great. I mean, it works on everything. So, um, what else do you guys have? Leak detectors. Leak um, detectors. Big blue. That's the OG product. Did you guys know that? That is the the first mm. product that. Well, it's the product that started refrigeration technologies. That's so. awesome. Is that below zero? They have, yes. Yes. They have a sub zero version. Yep. Sub yeah. Version. So, yeah, we've got the OG, I call it the OG, the original. And then we have the sub zero, and then we have the brush on style, too. I just buy sub zero because you never know where we're going to work. We're going to be in a freezer or it's going to be in the van or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just buy sub zero, and it works pretty good in all applications for me. So, I can't complain on that. I'm sorry. What's the Sarah? difference in the two, in the sub zero versus the regular, besides temperature? Obviously, is there another difference, or what's the what's the difference? So yeah, yeah. just the the level at which it will not freeze. Basically, it won't turn. Um, it basically has more glycol in it, essentially, so that it doesn't it doesn't get gelatinous uh, or have issues with it freezing. Um, and it's I, I believe it it's slight like so they're all micro leak detectors. The big blue is like 0.65. Of an ounce per year it will detect the sub zero is like 0.75 so it's slightly higher but still a, a micro leak <laughs> okay. and and that's good down to what negative 30 is that what it is negative 30 you got it 
That's uh, that's below what we were doing. I'm not doing any ultra low. Hopefully, you're never in that situation. I'm yeah. well, sorry. I mean, the, the coldest I work with is negative 10, and that's in those EEV like restaurant, you know, they, the mess. And if it's negative 10, like you're that. not looking for a leak. Yeah, you know, no, that's what I'm saying. If, if I'm looking for a leak, it's because it's not negative 10. So exactly. I've, I've never had an issue with any, you know, anything, but I always do use the big blue. I mean, I use that on everything, even for um, when I, uh, do the gas lines for fryers. Mm -hmm. I check mm -hmm. what that's. I do everything with that. I, everything carried, yep. I carried my bottle in today. I had a call that a uh, customer said that there was gas pouring out the front of their range, and I carried the bottle in there with me. I was like, well, let's see if the, you know the valve came loose, the body came loose, or something. And I turn it on. I'm like, what the hell? And the burner was just clogged. It was coming back out the venturi. But I was like, man, I was ready to spray some big blue in there and make another video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've used that stuff in. <laughs> Yeah. I've used that stuff in um in the pneumatic Taylor grills that you they have a little pump down there and they have all those lines for uh the for the the platens and I use that stuff in there too looking for leaks. So mm -hmm. I'll use that shit anywhere. Kind of like uh yeah, that, that hot sauce. Yeah. Use that shit on there. <laughs> Everything. Uh, yeah, big blue <laughs> my butt. I mean I will use electronic leak detector to get to the general area. And then that's when I go back in for the blue to pinpoint it. And it, I do, I have pretty good luck with it. I pump up some nitrogen and uh, go to town. So it works really well. <laughs> so someone asked about where to go. Uh, coil coating. Um, what's the story with the coil coating product in a purple can, mainly for marine or salt water areas? Yeah. So the Lord. coil coating is going to be typically used in your salt water areas, right? Because if you think about it, the salt is going to be really corrosive to your coil. So you want to try and protect it. A lot of coils now also come with a, a coil coating on them. And I'm echoing now. <laughs> I hate listening to myself. Please make it stop. But <laughs> um, so if you have a, uh, the coil coating existing as well. Anytime you use a brightener or a corrosive cleaner, you actually are stripping it again of that coating. So if you are in a saltwater area or marine area and you want to use a coil coating, that will an extra layer of protection. Or if you've had previously a coil coating on there and you've stripped it, then you would want to use that. Good to know. Good to know. I like that. I've seen some guys use it uh, on, you know, when they do an install close to the ocean, that kind of stuff. I see a pretty good demand for it there. Um, I like the idea that if you have a super greasy coil and you use a brightener, you have to use a brightener, go ahead and spray that back on there to help protect that coil. It makes a lot of sense. You got it. Yep, you got it. That's the, the third and final uh, way that we recommend using a bright is if you are about to apply a coil coating because you need that real clean um, surface in order for the coil coat to stick. Hmm. You guys have all kinds of stuff. So we can get the pan drain treatment real quick. Um, my favorite product. <laughs> I, I have some on the truck. I use it when I do pans. Um, if I clean a, a evaporator coil out, I spray it down with that. Um, it does a pretty good job. You know, We talk about our environments. Our environments are terrible. We work in it's slimy and nasty. So I try to spray it. If I, if I pull an evaporator cover off, I try to at least spray it on there you know, to make sure it's good to go. Yeah, for, for those of you who don't know, the pan and drain is another unique, I feel like, product with regards to treatments, just because most of your pan treatments are chlorine tabs, and they're not super effective. They're also not great for metal or, you know, any, obviously, this doesn't really apply to you, but it, for residential, for example, a lot of the times those drain lines will drain into a yard. Right. So now you've got basically pure chlorine draining on your plants, maybe where your dog is getting water or kids are playing. It's not super safe. Um, and it's also not really effective in the pan. You know, it's going to eat just a little area around where you place it and not really do much anywhere else. So um, I know I talked about enzymes already with the EVAP, but the pan and drain has enzymes in it too. So it's got that same technology. Well, it would just go to town on any sludge, slime, you know, all that wonderful stuff in the pan and uh, really digest it to send it all the way out and get rid of it. And then it'll put down a nice layer of silicone to help keep anything future growing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty unique, I think, in, in what it's doing. I don't really think there's anything else out there that is doing that. So will it clear a drain clog? Like, um, 
sometimes I get these ice machines with uh, dispensers, like in the hotels and whatnot, and the drain underneath them gets super clogged and it's a hassle to clean it out. Can I pour that in there and then that'll eat up the clog and it'll flush out? Food safe. It is food safe. I have heard of people putting it in the drain like that. We actually, so we suggest when you're doing um, like your unit, right? To spray your paint, sp spray down the drain line because it will, it will still, it's, if it's all the same sludge, right? It's going to eat it. Um, now, I don't know how deep the drain is or how long it will take because it's going to be situation dependent, but yes, it will work. I've also heard people putting it, I'm not recommending this, but they put it down like their sinks because they've had like clogs in their sinks and they'll put it down there. So multi-purpose. <laughs> so, so, so Ashley, when you say, you know, air handlers and residential, it took me all of a week being in this field to realize that it wasn't all package units. We, in restaurants, they actually do have a shitload of air handlers up in the drop ceiling. It's the same setup. Um, so whatever, I mean, the hell you go through to climb up in a in a in a in a residential ceiling is the same shit we're dealing with out there. So it it all applies. It's okay. all relevant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this some. is a little new forte oh, for me. I was so ticked off, like r my first year into the field, and I'm just like, why am I climbing up in here and messing with an air handler? I thought this was all <laughs> package units, and they're like, bro, you just got here. I'm just like, oh god. We we, uh, we have to we have a location with a rent a 20 foot step ladder to do like six split units in and when that pm comes due i i make sure i avoid that one like the plague yeah <laughs> i'm off that day i'm out sick that day <laughs> sick you can yeah. move tables you're like trying to figure out you're playing jenga trying to like stack the ladder over stuff to climb up it's just it's not worth it man. i'm like i'm not yeah. doing it. i'm not doing it whatsoever so um another thing we do is ice machines so i see you guys have a viper nickel safe ice machine you guys only offer the one cleaner the uh i didn't know that. that's correct yep Actually, I have it sitting right next to me. Weird. <laughs> Let me see that. Nice. Yeah, I've used yeah. that one. That, that one's nice. I like that one. Yeah, we uh, we only let our guys, if they keep ice machine cleaner in our truck, we only let them keep nickel safe just because uh, we don't like buying uh, plates for ice machines. <laughs> yep. Um, and I, I don't know if this is standard, but I know with ours, you don't have to sanitize after. So. I know that that can be helpful. So you don't have to do a two, two part process, but that's good. Like that. You recommend throwing away the first couple of ices or you're good. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Just check it. Yeah. Your first, your first run you should toss. So I, I'm, if I have like a piece on a, a steamer or something scaled up, I will use ice machine cleaner to descale it. So um, that's my thing too. My biggest use for ice machine cleaners is to scale and stuff. It's not even ice machines. I mean, most of the time I'm using it to scale parts to something else because it just works so well, you know. <laughs> Instead of uh, CLR. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about the ice machine cleaner is food safe, and we're working on stuff that you know is used to make food. It only makes sense to use that. So all these different options, I don't even like. It's stuff that I would never think of, right? Like, oh, I use it for this. And then people are like, oh, I do this and I do this. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a totally different world we're in. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm i curious about your guys' hand wipes. I've never used your hand wipes. Um, I'm a firm believer in hand wipes, especially, you know, like I said, we work in the greasiest, nastiest conditions. Um, and I like to wipe my tools down. Uh, my drill, my impact, my hands, everything. Does uh, your guys' hand wipes have like that pumicey feel or that gritty feel, or is it smooth, or what's the texture to it? So that's actually a really good question. Ours are double sided, so you've got one side that's smooth and then one side that has a texture to it. So I wouldn't call it like pumicey. It's not crazy abrasive by any means, um, but it does have some texture to kind of help get stuff off. Um, and then the other thing that's really unique for us is they're not alcohol based. So most of the wipes out there are alcohol based. They're gonna be really drying for your hands. Or I know, I feel like every guy has like cuts and nicks on their hands. So, you know, if it's alcohol based, it's gonna burn, it's getting in there. You won't have that. And then it also has vitamin E, lanolin and aloe in it. So it'll treat your skin right, but we'll still, you know, get the grease off. So you want a day at the spa after work, and I see. That's the exact answer I would expect from refrigeration technologies. Is it smooth or is it is it gritty? Yes. As soon as I said wipes, Jennifer put that in the chat. She said the only wipes I don't need lotion after. So that makes sense. You know, it's not yeah. alcohol. So it's not yep, trying to. That's how they're nice. They're definitely nice. Um, I will. And 
uh, Mayberry, Mike Mayberry did a, a cool little video where he dips his hand in roof mastic and then uses the wipes to Ooh. clean it. And it works. It took him eight wipes, but he got it all off of his hands. So I think that that's, that's legit. A good testament to their clean power. That's a hell of a testament. Hughesman just swears by those wipes. I've seen that. You know, <laughs> yeah. I haven't had an opportunity to try them. Viper wipe. Yeah, he just did. He just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I get them. I'm trying out this I get. I need some. Um, I try everything out. I'm, I'm bad. I will try something new comes out. I want to try it, so I try all kinds of brands. And uh, I haven't tried your guys's. Um, uh, that'll be my next tab I buy for sure. Well, that'll be the next tab my work buys for me. I will say that. There we go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> me, me too. Manana. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to go shopping. Manana. Yeah, he's going refrigeration. I need uh, a 55 gallon drum of this. I need a. I'm gonna power it. All right, let's see what else. Um, you guys have welding products. So you guys offer wet rag, the wet rag heat shield, and the spray on fire protection. Now, I've used wet rag for years. Um, that stuff's pretty slick. I like it. You, know, you dry it out, get it wet, mix it up, put it back to work. That's a pretty good job. Now, right now, I've been seeing everybody and their brother talk about this wet rag heat shield. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is our uh, brand new, well, it's our most new product that we put out. So it came out in February. We debuted it at AHR last year, um, but it's just amazing. Like, you know, if you haven't used it, you should. Um, there's tons, if you're on social media, there's a ton of content with the heat shield where you can see it in action. Um, I'll be putting out some more videos. I think I mentioned in beginning i don't i don't know if we were live yet now or not but um mentioned about how i'm kind of doing a september heat shield month so we're doing a nice like pit uh, push and lots of content around it um but it's amazing like you know they've got guys out there just putting a direct torch to it i've seen guys put their iphone down and then the heat shield and torch over it i've seen people put it to their skin and torch so it really does work. Um, and it's also cool because you can use it wet or dry, which I don't think anything else out there is like that. So dry, it's going to work perfectly. No, no worries. But if you feel like you need a little extra protection, you can actually get it wet. And then on top of that, let's say it's really nasty and you've got a bunch of dirt on it or anything like that. You can actually put it in your washing machine and it's safe. So sweet. I've seen chill guy, man. He, he uses that thing several times a day, I think. And he's doing residential. He's in people's houses. So he really has to worry about, you know, burning the floors and other kind of stuff like that. And he gives that thing absolute hell. He's just in there right on top of it, brazing, and pulls it out. And his wife's it off and goes about his business. He swears by it. So I'm going to check that out, too. I'm going to have to get a truck stock PO tomorrow and spend some money, I think. <laughs> Love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Then... Yeah, definitely recommend. It's a, it's a good product. There's a couple... Um, Again, I hate plugging wholesalers just because I it feels like favoritism. But there are a couple of wholesalers out there right now that are running some specials for the month of September. So uh, United and Johnstone, if you shop at either of those, they have some specials. But, I mean, it's like less than $50 for the heat shield. So it's really cost effective for what it does. Okay, sweet. I'm going to check that out. Got to get the office to buy me one of them. <laughs> I just do a truck like PO, and they're like, "Oh, what is this?" I'm like, "Oh, it's a it's a tool. Just just leave it on my That's truck." Exactly <laughs> how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> don't worry about it. I don't ask. I pay, I ask for forgiveness. I don't pay. Go for I ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Coworkers ask me, "How'd you get all that?" I'm like, "I went and bought it. They let you buy it." I'm like, "Can't return it. I already used it. Yeah. They didn't know I was buying it." I don't uh, know how to work the system. So the wet rag putty, um, we've all used that stuff. That stuff's great. Um, keeps from burning up dryers. Uh, compressors, everything. Um, it's, it's a great product. Um, I don't know what more we can say about that. It just put it on there and block the heat, take it off, clean it up, get it wet, put it back in the container, go about your business. It's uh, pretty mm -hmm. easy. Yep, yep. Um, it is reusable. I always like to point out, because a lot of people don't know this, it actually has a color change technology in it. So it starts out like a blue color. Um, and obviously it's reusable. It's going to depend on how much heat you're actually putting on the putty, how many times you can reuse it, right? But once it has actually taken all the heat that that piece of putty can take, it will actually turn white. And that's how you know that it's done so and you can put it in the trash. Um, so be mindful of that. Also, I always suggest if you do um, if you do actually burn it, so if it's black, 
after you've used it, you probably want to take that off too and not reuse that. Oh, uh, back if we mix it back up. <laughs> if it's black, you didn't do your gauges right, right? You <laughs> too much acetylene or something? Uh, if it's black, you don't know how to braise, and you're just burning. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a carbon. It's you fried it. I've done. It. I've been there, done that, man. Um, uh, you know, some days I struggle. Some days are better than others. And some days I have days where I can't braise and save my life. And I'll burn a whole rod on something just to make sure it's sealed. It looks like crap, but it's sealed. <laughs> but it's sealed, and that's the important part, right? Just feeding that whole rod. <laughs> dime size hole, dime size drip on you know below it, where it's all just running off. I mean, I just I get paranoia, man. I'm, I'm, that's my biggest downfall is braising, and I I just. I'll have it sealed the first time it look nice, and I second guess myself, and I just go back in, just go back in, just go back in. I'm just like, why am I doing this to myself? I should have just checked. It. Why do I do this? Mm-hmm. That's so, from being uh, scarred from when we first started, because I get that way now. Years later, it's just like when I first started, I second guessed myself, and I've screwed some shit up. And let me just mm-hmm. stick it in there. I changed the evaporator yesterday. I was like, I did one pass on the evaporator suction line, the cap tube, and I was like. Oh, let me get in there. I was like, nope, nope, let's not do it. I went back to the backside, yeah. put my dryer in, raised my cap tube into the dryer. I'm like, let's pressurize it. Like 185, that held. I was like, I'm glad I didn't go back in there because I'm going to tore shit up. <laughs> yeah, make it worse. That's what I do. Oh, uh, yeah. You never make it better. You always make it worse. That's the bad thing. <laughs> so, um, you guys offer a couple uh, spray guns. Are those formulated for the Viper or are they just the general? So, I mean, you can use anything in it uh, with the the foam gun specifically. It just has lower dilution level ratios on it that you're not going to find on another gun. So mm-hmm. that's why it's, it is it is tailored for the Viper products and our concentrates. Um, but it's not going to hurt you to use that gun with another product or, you know, vice versa. Um, same thing with the pump. Yeah, I like that pump. I didn't realize you guys had that. That may be something that... that... Probably do some good for me. Or add that to the PO. Yeah. yeah. So, I didn't even know about a pump. Yeah, you got a pump? Yeah, it's just a small little hand yeah. pump. It's a two to yeah, one. Like, oh, is it the, the the one with the pistol grip and you just. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've seen that. I've seen it. one of my team members has the Viper foam gun and the Viper pump. I'm not sure if they're using the same product, but I'll have to look into that. <laughs> I think we may have covered. Uh, what else we got? I mean, that's. That's probably for the most part what we have. We do have, um, you know, a silicone grease, which doubles as like a heat sink compound. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of guys like to have that on the truck. Um, for like the new, the newer systems, they have, I don't know, I guess they come with like a little packet of heat sink compound. And I guess a lot of people lose that. So just kind of having this on the truck is good and it's food grade. So I guess that's helpful. Probably be helpful for you guys. Um uh, mm-hmm. Wait, and that then, heat seat compound is for like um, thermistors, like yeah. that kind of heat seat compound, the, the white pasty stuff that you can. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's that. good to know. Yeah, especially um, in the in the Garland grills, because you can't get you don't get that heat seat stuff with the Garland. The, well, I'm not saying yeah. names, but with any of the yeah, the yeah. manufacturers, <laughs> you gotta get that. We're, stuff we're not saying names three times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well now i know where to get that stuff thank you (laughs) richard (laughs) Uh, so i think we ran through the gamut on refrigeration technology so i want to save a little bit of time here to talk about something um coming up in well it's january this year almost in february it was february last year so the ahr come on pat um expo is in chicago this year and if you don't know, there is this event that happened Sunday night before that is really cool. And if you wait. haven't been, you need to go. So it is the HVAC Tactical Awards. It's put on by Mr. Ben Poole. Um, phenomenal guy. He's doing a ton for our industry. Um, he's, you know, opened up welcome arms to, you know, the food service guys. We do HVAC, but we do, you know, mainly food service. But, you know, we're a part of this. And uh, it's an amazing time. Ashley was on the red carpet giving interviews last year. And I got to ask, are you doing it again this year? I am. Sweet. I am. So if you're going, which you should be going, and you have to get your tickets ASAP because they will be gone, Mm -hmm. um, I can interview you. (laughs) Yeah. Julie with the questions, hassle you. (laughs) 
<laughs> that was a class. There was a film crew there. They were taking pictures. Um, you know, had the bright lights on you. You walk in, you get your picture taken in front of the sign, and you, you can come over and get, you know, an interview. And I was too shy to get an interview, and uh, Ben forced me to do it. And afterwards, I realized why he forced me to do it, because I won an award. So <laughs> he wanted to make sure I was over there at some point. So that was uh, it was a cool experience, and uh, I look forward to it this year. Um, it's going to be even bigger and better. Um, this year, they're doing a post party, so you don't have to leave. Uh, the last few years, they kind of kicked everybody out. Everybody kind of scattered this year. Everybody's going to kind of stay there, and there's a post party of a DJ. And um, it's going to be even bigger and better. Um, the swag packs are pretty phenomenal this year. Uh, ticket price is up a little bit, but I don't think anybody's going to be playing when they see what they're getting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely worth it. Um, I think it's such a cool experience, right? Especially for all, like for all of us social media people, you know, you're you built this community online and you communicate with these people on the regular, but you never really see them in person. So it's such a cool event to come together. You know, you're probably already going to AHR. You probably already want to go to AHR. So you can combine the two events, knock it out, and just further establish those relationships. It's it's if I'm being honest, going to the one in Vegas, which was the first in person one, was probably what's kept me in this industry as long as I have been. Um, you know, it, I'm going to say this and I don't mean this to be offensive, but it's not the most friendly for women. And it wasn't several years ago. So it's hard. It's hard establishing really good connections with people. And um, the social media connection and community for me has helped keep me going. Like it's, it's, it's been so supportive and so amazing. Um, and Ben was really instrumental in that. Um, and I met my boyfriend through the HVAC tactical awards. So I have lots, I have lots of love for the award show. <laughs> do you do, I'm going to talk about you for a second, but do you do such a great job of like whatever product group you're repping? Cause you've only been with refrigeration technology for how many months now? I mean, um, I started at the end of May. Yeah. So, I mean, just a few months, but you have dived head first into learning all the products, showing it all off. And you did the same thing at your former employer. You, you, you want to be the subject matter expert on what you're covering. And it shows that people have a lot of respect for you because you actually, you, yeah. you're not tired of just, Hey, look at this. You know, you're actually explaining what it is, what the product does, the advantages. So I think, you know, you've earned a lot of respect just in how you handle yourself and what you do for the industry. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's a, a very kind compliment. Um, <laughs> you know, I think, I think that stems from, one, not wanting to sound dumb, right? <laughs> Two, um, as a female, I think I have to work a little bit harder. Um, people, I felt like, especially in the beginning when I was just starting out, like they wanted to test me a lot. Like, do you know what you're talking about? Or are you just regurgitating facts, right? So for me, it's always, I want to be the subject matter expert. I, you know, I'm not a tech. So I want to make sure that I can answer the questions that you guys have and know what your guys' experience is. Um, so that I can accurately give you that information, right? Yeah, no, that's whole job. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, Ashley, and that's you know it's pretty humble of you and and to be vulnerable to say that you feel like at a time that you know that there wasn't great representation with women, but I, I mean it's good to see Megan and Jen blazing trails just like you, mm -hmm. Ashley, and and it's good to see that we're going to continue to have good representation from you guys' part for future women to to enter our field. So. That's pretty yeah. awesome. 100%, 100%, I think yeah. social media has been a really easy avenue for a lot more women to get into yeah. this industry and really shine. Like Jen's great. Um, there's several women. I don't want to leave anyone out, but I know I had connected with like Leslie and Cass. They're doing a, a Power Women of the Trades podcast. They're awesome. Kathleen over at Tool Wife slash Tool Pros. She's wonderful. We talk pretty frequently. Um, Becca over at Vega, Jessica at RLS. Like, there's been a, a lot of really cool connections. Yeah. Maddie, um, really good job, too. So. Yeah. Maddie, yes. Yeah. Maddie. See, I was, this I, is going to be my first one. So, I'm pretty <laughs> stoked about everything. So, I'm still I'm trying not, to get rich to go, but, I'm, I'm you know. <laughs> you'll, you'll be gone. As long as you show up on the stage for those two episodes we're doing, we'll be all right. But I got a feeling I won't see you for like three days. <laughs> Just remember, they give stuff away free, but you got to get that home on the airplane, and they're going to weigh your bag, so you might want to watch out for <laughs> stuff you... Uh, you okay, I'll out. bring an extra empty bag then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like ship it back. You can do yeah. that, too. Yeah. You can do that, too. Yeah, very stoked. It's, very fun. Stoked. it's just fun in general, too, you know? Like, 
so many cool people, so many new things. Um, I mean, there was a lot of random things that I was like, why is this here? But it's really cool. Like the robot dog. Did you see the robot dog? Oh, that's there every year. I think <laughs> like doing flips, rolling over and playing <laughs> forward, and that thing's so cool. It's, it's, it's so much stuff, such a variety. And I was talking to um, Nicole about, you know, I was like, hey, how can we try to get the food service industry into this more? You know, try to figure out why ways we can bring our side into it a little more. You know, and there's refrigeration companies there that we deal with, but they're not really poor rich. It's you clicked on that one with the quickness, bro. I did that. I did that. <laughs> oh, you did that? <laughs> we bully rich so bad. We bullied him, in, bullied him into getting the logo. We're going to bully him into HR. Yo, we're going to upgrade. Yeah. We're going to upgrade. I got, I got shirts coming next week just because I, I feel, you know, out of place. Y'all got your logos. Shirts, <laughs> logos. We got them inside. <laughs> you're, you're, you you got to be next. Opportunities here. Ashley, so, you 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 you're your own brand. We we got to get you a logo too. Of course, she have something. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we do have. So we just launched some co-brand stuff with uh, Viper Refrigeration Technology. So we've got stickers and koozies, and there is more to come. So it's all limited run, um, limited edition. So is this where we have we have technicians and their brand on the on the uh, packaging, or is that another company? That's a is, yeah, I don't know. You're thinking of, uh, yeah, a different company. I know what you're talking oh, about right well, now. That's an idea. Um, no, wanna, so this you guys is might want to do that too <laughs> for a limited time. I feel like that might just be copying or original. Ah, some originators, no, no some are duplicators, whatever. It's cool. You got to be OG. <laughs> Nobody has HVAC Ash, right? So we're promoting me for the moment, and then we'll go from there. That works. You can be the face. You can blaze it. You can blaze it. You got to get in where you fit in, right? <laughs> so anything else you'd like to cover? Uh, we right, we talked about all the great products. Um, if you guys haven't used their products, make sure you go find them. That's uh, refrigetech.com. Yeah. Um, you can get it at all your supply houses, anyone that carries any of their products. If they don't have it, they can bring it in as long as you can distribute it for it. Um, everything they have is phenomenal. I mean, I've used so much of it. Um, especially if you follow the directions. I just you gotta throw it out there. Um, she's got a series of safety videos. If you need that, they're out there. <laughs> find them. Um, you don't want to end up like me and have glasses when you have perfect vision. So <laughs> I mean, um, also if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on social or um, via email. My email is just Ashley at refridgetech.com. Um, I'm more than happy to help with anything. Uh, trainings, conversations, phone calls, DM me and I'll help you. Jason's writing something down, so he's writing an email address down. <laughs> no, mate. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, under an hour, so let go ahead and plug everywhere you want to plug where people can find you um, yeah. and get that out there. So, all of my social handles are HVAC underscore Ash pretty simple. Um, if you're a LinkedIn person, it's Ashley Linz. Um, I dropped my email already. So you've got that. Uh, and then anything refrigeration technologies, obviously um, it's at refrigeration technologies on TikTok. It's at Viper HVAC. Um, I think that's it. You already dropped the website. So if you need us, we're here. We're, you know, always down to help and train. Um, we just want you guys to be safe and use the best products for yourself and the equipment. Thank you. Sweet. Well, thanks everybody for coming on and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for having me. See ya. If you guys would, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing the podcast. It really helps us grow and helps us know which direction to move in. Also, if you have any suggestions for guests, please email me at commercialkitchenchronicles at gmail.com. Or if you want to be a guest, email me. Love to have you guys on. Thanks a lot. See you next week.